Today, we will be going over the law of sine, and this right here will be good for you if you are taking trick or pre-calc. We will go over five examples, including a word problem, and of course, you guys can go down on this file in the description and try the questions along the way, or just take notes. And you guys can see for number four, it's tricky. Let's just have a look right here first. We see that this side is 4.2, so it's this. And this side here, A, is 2.8, so it's this. But the angle, yes, it's 37 degrees here, so it's that. And the question is asking us to find out angle B, which is here and here. Of course, they look different, so what's going on? Can we still use law of sign for this? Well, I'll tell you, this is the tricky question, and don't worry, I will take care of you guys. I will show you guys the ambiguous case at the end. All right, let's go ahead and just get started. Law of sine. Keep this in mind. This is only for when we are given an angle, side angle, or a side, side angle, these two cases. And of course, we have the statement here. Sine A over little a is equal to sine B over little b. It's equal to sine C over little c. And of course, usually we use the capital letter for angles. And when we go away, you see, this is the corresponding side, and we use little c for that. All right, now let's get into the first example. We will be solving this triangle, and it means that we are going to find the missing sides and also the missing angles. Have a look. First, we are given angle A, which is 80 degrees, and its corresponding side, 5.1. And we are also given B right here is 2.6. And with that said, we can find out what this angle B is. All right, so perhaps let me just do it like that. And let's go ahead and just set that up. We know that sine of B over little b is equal to sine of A over little a. And now it's just drawing the numbers. Sine B, we don't know, over little b, which is the 2.6. And that's equal to sine A which is 80 degrees over A, which is 5.1. Then we can multiply 2.6 on both sides. So we are looking at sine B equals 2.6 times sine of 80 degrees over 5.1. And of course, right now you can just use a calculator and put everything on there and then just compute this for you. Or you can get rid of the sign on this side first. And to do so, we will have to take the inverse sign so that we can get rid of this and get the angle B by itself. I will write this down for you guys. And I would recommend you guys to do this if you are you know, taking the exam or so, because this right here, just in case if you enter something wrong on the calculator, then you can still get partial credit. All right, B, which is the angle, so I will they know that we have the measure angle B is approximately equal to, if you use a calculator, we'll end up with about 30.14 degrees. I will just write this 30.1 degrees. So that's angle B. That said, when we have 30.1 degrees here, we know that C is just straightforward because we can say angle C has to be equal to 180 degrees minus 80 and then minus 30.1 so worked out everything angle C will be equal to 69.9 degrees yay so 69.9 degrees and lastly we just have to find out the little c and here's the deal if you are trying to find out a side, go ahead and write the law of sine this way. Write down the little c first on the top over sine of big C and make it equal to, let's use little a, this and that, and just write the little a on the top over sine a. And we can do this. It's pretty much because we are looking at this equation and then just do the reciprocal. It's easier this way so that you can solve for c. Uh, easily this way all right little c we don't know sine c which is sine of 69.9 degrees and make sure that your calculator is in the degree mode okay and then we have 5.1 over 
sine A, which is just sine of 80 degrees. Now multiply this on both sides, we will get C is equal to, I'll just put it as 5.1 times sine of 69.9 degrees over sine of 80 degrees. And for this, let's just go ahead and use the calculator real quick. 5.1 uh, times sine of 69.9 degrees, and then we divide it by sine of 80 degrees. And make sure you do a calculation on your own as well. And we get approximately 4.86. And for sites, I think I will keep it as two decimal places. But of course, if you're taking an exam or Mm, doing the whole questions, just follow the direction. That will be the best way to go about this. So here we have it. The triangle has been solved. So C is 4.86. Next, solve this triangle. Why don't you guys try this first if you haven't done so already? Done? Good. Okay. So it depends on how you like it. You see that we are given the angle A and also the angle B. Of course, we can find out what angle C is right away. So perhaps let's do that right away. So we know that angle C will be equal to 180 degrees minus 50.5 degrees and then minus 87.9 degrees. Of course, if you would like, you can use the calculator or you can also just do this in your head or whatever you want. And you will be able to get, let me just make sure that I have the current number. You will get 41.6 degrees. So this is angle C. So that's nice. 41.6 degrees. That said, we can go ahead and find out what little b, little a, right? So let's see. Let's figure out little a first. And again, this is the side, so let's put on little a on the top first. Little a over sine a equals, let's use, well, we don't know b, so we have to use c, right? So we have to say little c over sine c. Little a, we don't know. Sine a, a is 50.5 degrees. And that's equal to c is 3. This is little c is the side, and then big C is the 41.6 degrees, so sine of 41.6 degrees. And multiply this on both sides, we get A is equal to 3 times sine of 50.5 degrees over sine of 41.6 degrees. And then I will use a calculator for this, so go ahead, 3 times sine of 50.5 degrees divided by sine of 41.6 degrees and I get about 3.49 and this is the length all right so we know a is about 3.49 now we're going to find out what b is so again let's go ahead and put on b on the top over sine b equals Let's use C, why not? So little c over sine c. Or if you would like, you can also use little a over sine of big A, but I'll leave that to you. Little b, we don't know. Sine b, b is 87.9 degrees. Little c, we know is 3 over sine c. C is 41.6 degrees. All right, now B is just equal to 3 times sine of 87.9 degrees. This is my 7, okay? And then over sine of 41.6 degrees. So real quick, let's go ahead and just do 3 times sine of 87.9 degrees over sine of 41.6 degrees and I get five I mean 4.52 so B is approximately 4.52
and that said we are done again we have this triangle done perhaps already down here b is about 4.52 and let's also make sure that the numbers make sense because you see that this is the biggest angle in the triangle and b is the biggest side and that is 4.52 which is bigger than 3 and also 3.49 so yeah at least this right here is like the small check that you should just look at real quick likewise this angle is 50.5 degrees which is bigger than 41.6 degrees so this side has to be longer than that and that's also true so so far so good now let's go ahead and look at a word problem so we have an airplane that's going horizontally this way like this yeah and it says that we have these two angles that are given and we also know that from point A to point B is 5 miles so perhaps I will go ahead and just put that down right away from A to B this right here is 5 miles let me just put on 5 and at the end we'll worry about the units because all the units are you know in this case just miles nothing tricky okay let's see what else do we know we also know that x is 32 degrees so this right here is 32 degrees and y is 48 degrees good now we are going to find the distance from the airplane to point a so that is we need to know this distance hmm okay we do have a triangle if you guys look at the red part that's the triangle but we don't have any angles inside that is not a good idea of course when you use law of sine and later on law of cosine we want to have the angles inside of the triangle so let's see here's the deal this is 32 degrees and because the airplane is flying horizontally so that means this right here is parallel to that that means this angle will also be 32 degrees and of course you can justify that this is called the alternative interior angle when you have a transversal that cuts through two parallel lines but you know 32 degrees likewise this angle here will be 48 degrees so let me also just write that down and now we have these two things that's much better okay this is angle b when we go away let me just put this right here as little b and we know this side right here is five that means we should also find out what this angle is and that angle is just 180 degrees minus 32 degrees and then minus 48 so let me just put this down right here so all together this right here 180 minus 32 minus 48 we get 100 so this angle is 100 degrees so that means we can do the following we can say because one little b right so little b over let me just put this down with the regular length now width the thickness anyway little b over by the way this is pi we want it to be over sine of b which is 48 degrees yeah so this and that and then set that equal to the length that we know is 5 over this angle which is 100 so sine of 100 degrees so that means b equals 5 times sine of 48 degrees over sine of 100 degrees so again use a calculator sine times uh, 5 times sine of 48 degrees divided by sine of 100 degrees and I get about 3.77 so because this right here is a distance so 3.77 miles so that is for b well it's little b but it's part a
<laughs> All right, now for part B, we are going to find the elevation of the airplane. And the elevation is just the height of the airplane. So this right here is just the height. So that means we go here, we have to find out how long this thing is. Hmm. And that's going to be a right angle. So how can we do it? Well, we have a couple ways to do it. Let's look at a right triangle here, and I will make it thicker like this. Let's look at this blue one. So we have this triangle. And the elevation, which is the height. So let me call this H. And earlier, we found out what B is. B is right here, which is 3.77. Right, This right here is 3.77. So that means if you look at the blue triangle, we actually have a right triangle. So let me just put that down right here real quick for you guys. We have a right triangle, and we know that this is H, which is what we are trying to find. This angle is 32 degrees, and the hypotenuse of this triangle is 3.77. So we can simply just use sine. We don't have to use law of sine, because sine is for a triangle. Whenever you don't have a right triangle, then you use law of sine or maybe law of cosine. Sine of 32 degrees in your case will be opposite, which is the h, over 3.77. And this means h will be 3.77 times sine of 32 degrees. And again, let's just go ahead and do that real quick. 3.77 times sine of 32 degrees, I get about... 2. So it's like 1.9978. So I'll just say that's about like 2, 2 miles. Or if you really want, it's 1.9978. So let me just make a note for the people interested. This is 1.9978. But yeah. Okay. So keep in mind, if you have a word problem, don't worry, use the picture and make sure that you have the angles inside of the triangle, like what we did here. And then apply a lot of sign or just a regular sign here and there. And that's how you solve a word problem. Now, here is a tricky part. Go ahead. I want you guys to really, really try this question first. We are going to solve for angle B from these two triangles. So angle B is right here. This is the angle B, and likewise, this is angle B. But as I discussed earlier in the beginning of the video, notice that 4.2, 2.8, and the 37, 4.2, 2.8, and the 37, they are all the same. So what exactly is going on? Go ahead, pause the video, and try this first. All right, if you really did try the questions, let me know, comment down below, okay? Let's just take a look at number four, and we just care about to find out what angle B is, which is this angle. We have the upper side, so that's 4.2. So this sounds pretty good. Sine of capital B over little b should be equal to sine of capital A over little a. So nothing wrong with that, right? And then, of course, we can throw in numbers. Sine of B, we don't know. Little b is 4.2, and that's equal to sine of a, which is sine of 37 degrees. Little a is 2.8. Then multiply the 4.2 on both sides. We get sine b equals 4.2 times sine of 37 degrees over 2.8. And then to get rid of the sine, we need the inverse sign. So that this and that cancel. And you see that measure angle B. And if you use a calculator to do this, arc sign, right, the inverse sign of 4.2 times sine of 37 degrees and then divided by 2.8, we get about 40 no, 64.5 degrees. So that's what we have. And if you guys take a look at this picture, I use the computer to generate the picture and the angles and also the length of the sides, they are 
as accurate as possible. So it does look like we have about like 64.5 degrees, which is legit. So yes, this is correct. No problem with that. And now here's the deal. If you just look at number five, suppose we didn't do number four. You look at this picture and you're trying to find out what angle B is. Hmm, sure, we have a side, side, and angle, right? Side, side, and angle. So we can use law of sine. And let's see. I'm just going to set up sine B over little b. That should be equal to sine A over little a. Sine B we don't know. Over little b is 4.2. Sine B, no, sine A is 37 degrees. Little a is 2.8. And yeah, I know. Everything is the same as what we did earlier, right? 4.2 times sine of 37 degrees over uh, 2.8. And right here, again, we will have to take the inverse sine on both sides. They cancel, kind of. You will see what I mean by that later on. Measure angle B is about... Yeah, if you use a calculator, if you use a calculator for this, of course, you will still end up with this number 64.5 because it's the same exact input, right? So now, uh, let's take a look. If we say angle B is 64.5 degrees, how can this be 64.5 degrees? Look, this angle is certainly bigger than 90 degrees because here, it's a perpendicular line, right? This is definitely bigger than 90 degrees. So, ah, uh, what do we do? Well, here is what you really have to remember. Whenever you are trying to use law of sine, if the angle is bigger than 100, if the angle is bigger than 90 degrees, then be really, really careful, right? So I'll just perhaps make a note right here somewhere. Mm, I would just say, be careful when you use the law of sine if the angle is bigger than 90 degrees. Right, and that's exactly the situation here. Because the deal is that when we have inverse sine, right, this function here, the domain range, right, the domain range is the deal. I'll tell you guys the range for this right here, it's only going to give you negative pi over two to pi over two. Meaning the best answer that I can get you is from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees. Anything over 90 degrees, then we will just have to do it carefully. So how do we do it though? Hmm, don't worry, let me show you. First, we are going to extend this line, right? We still have to be careful, right? We still have to be careful, but I perhaps I erase this a little bit. Yeah. So let me just say, here, I'll still write down, be careful. All right, extend this base here, all right? Earlier we saw that here, this side is 2.8. But if you look at the picture that we had earlier, the 2.8 could have gone the other direction. In fact, that's exactly the case. We could actually draw a picture like this. So we could also have a triangle like this. And this side just drawing blue, it's also 2.8. And the deal is that the angle that we use from law of sine, again, because we had used the inverse sine, it gives us 64.5. And that's actually this angle here, 64.5. So let me just zoom in a little bit, just focus on this picture. This angle is 64.5 degrees. And now here's the deal. You see how this side is 2.8, so is this side. It's also 2.8. That means this triangle 
in blue, it's an isosceles triangle, meaning that this angle will also be 64.5 degrees. And now, how can we figure out this angle that we want? Well, the whole thing from here to here is 100 degrees, so we just have to do 100 degrees minus 64.5 degrees. So in this case, we will actually have to come back here and then erase this a little bit. Our angle B. And again, here is the reason why. Whenever the angle is clearly bigger than 90 degrees, we can just do this. Angle B is actually equal to, just go ahead and do 180 degrees minus the angle that you get from the inverse side, which was 64.5 degrees. All right, and that will give us this angle here. And of course, let's just go ahead and work this out real quick, 180 minus 64.5. I'm being lazy, I'm just using a calculator. Angle B, all right, is about equal to, uh, just, I'm not a big fan of like putting about equal to or equal to in this kind of situation, so just, you know it's about equal to, so 115.5 degrees. And that's exactly what we want. So it's this right here, 115.5 degrees, all right? So this right here is the case that when we end up with like, two different triangles, even though you see that um, we have this. And the key takeaway is that when you use law of sine, if the angle is bigger than 90 degrees, be careful. And just go ahead and do 180 degrees minus the number that you get from the inverse sine, and you'll be okay. Now, let me summarize this situation for you guys. Here, whenever we're given SSA, if you don't have a picture, then this is the so-called the ambiguous case because you may have like more than one mm, possibilities. And now here's the deal. Ideally, when we're given an angle A and then mm, a side B, and then you see, ideally we want to have a triangle. So here we can look at this triangle. It's a right triangle and say sine A equals the opposite, which is H, over this side, which is B. So H is just B times sine A. So keep that in mind. H is equal to B times sine A. And that's the height of the triangle if you just drop this line down, right, 90 degrees. Now, SSA, here, when we are given one side, another, and then the angle, SSA, yeah? If you see that this A, if it has, if this happens to be the height, then you have only one triangle. So if A is equal to the height, so that's what I'm trying to do. If A is equal to the height, so I'll just write this down. This is the one triangle case. That's when A is equal to the height, and the height is B times sine A. Right? And of course, you can draw a picture, it's much more clear, or you can follow this um, summary, depending on how you like it. And now if you take a look right here, sometimes if the sides are not long enough, you don't get a triangle, just like this right here. You are given a side, another side, and then the angle. But this right here, there's no way for you to form a triangle. You see the A is just hanging around, right? No matter how much you turn, there's no way. Well, earlier we said that if you drop the line going downward, that's H. As you can see, this is happening because A that's given is shorter than H. So here we have no triangle. This is impossible to get a triangle. And that's the case when A is less than H and H is B times sine A, right? That's why I did the B times sine A earlier. Now, here we have these two triangle situations. Either we can go this way or the other, and that's exactly what number four and five is about. 
So if I just given the numbers without a picture, then you have these two possibilities. You don't know which picture to draw. Sometimes the question will ask you to do both. And here's the deal. Again, just go ahead and put down the perpendicular line, the height. This is happening because you see the A, it's bigger than H, but it's less than our side B. All right. So this is the case that we have two triangles. Let me write that down. Two triangles, and that's the case when A is bigger than H, which is in between of H, and less than B. And H is what we said earlier, H is B times sine A. So I'll just put on B times sine A, and then this thing has to be less than B. All right, so this is the case. Lastly, when we are given A, right, the side, and another side, and then the angle, well, if A is bigger than B, you can draw a triangle this way. So this right here, we also have one triangle. So let me just put this down right here. One triangle. And the height doesn't matter anymore because the height is technically right here. But if A is bigger than B, we will also have one triangle. So this is where A is bigger than B. All right? So this right here will be the summary when we have an ambiguous case. And this is happening because we're only given side, side angle. We just don't know how to draw a triangle if we have like this case, right? With A is in between of um, H and also B. So sometimes it's extremely helpful if you have a picture. And again, keep in mind, I cannot stress this enough. If you have an angle bigger than 90 degrees, then be careful when you use law of sine. Better yet, watch my next video because I will show you how to use the law of cosine to help you with this kind of situations.